Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Flip That Zoo. Today we're going to be building a new habitat and this time it's going to be for our striped skunks. So when you start a new habitat you can look at the um, the journal, the notebook, and you can see how many animals should be in that habitat together. So this one because I want breeding a breeding couple I'm going to do one male one female and then they can have up to five babies in a breeding session so I put in two adults and five females and got the total amount of space needed for a habitat. Um, when I do that I usually just sketch out a basic layout for a habitat with I typically use the wooden um, barrier. I'm not sure why I typically use that one. Maybe it's just my favorite to work with. Uh, I also don't like to spend a lot when I'm just building a basic barrier because um, I'm in franchise and it will cost money regardless. So kind of just figuring out a basic outline of where I want the habitat to be. And um, I already decided before I started that I wanted to build my own walls for this habitat. So um, I already know that this barrier isn't going to stay the way it is, but it's just a broad idea of what we need to make sure we have enough space because I am a little concerned this area is small, so I wanted to make sure it was going to be enough space for um, our mating pair as well as up to five babies. So um, just doing a basic outline, I decided not to connect this to the next habitat yet. Um, I will be doing that um, as the video progresses, but for right now I just wanted a general idea of size just to make sure I wasn't going to waste my time building a habitat here for these skunks. Um, I didn't think it was going to be too small, honestly, because skunks are not very big, but sometimes you'll think, oh, this is plenty of space, and you'll um, click on the habitat size and you're like, Oh, never mind. <laughs> but this one is more than enough. We only needed 30, I think it was 32,000 feet. And um, and this one was more than that. So I also wanted to look at how tall we needed the structure to be. So when I'm building the, the fence that I'm going to be building by hand, I make sure to go ahead and get the size right out the gate by comparing the size of the structure I'm going to use for fencing to the size of the habitat. It's kind of like use the tools given to you so you can make the job a little bit easier. Um, I knew I wanted something twilight pack. I wanted it to match or at least uh, be compatible with the castle and the vibe we have going. So I was already thinking about those little rock walls, but I wanted to look at everything they had because I haven't had a ton of time spent with the Twilight Pack yet, so I just kind of wanted to glance over everything and make sure that um, the thoughts in my head were matching what I was going to build. Even while putting these together, I knew that I wanted it to be kind of unique, so when I made it a little bit taller and was looking at it, I really was not satisfied. <laughs> um, so I decided this was not quite the look I was going for and ended up getting rid of that top one and using this outer um, fence for, I guess, the inner inspiration, which um, was kind of what I wanted it to be based off of anyway, since it would be attached to that fence. So I felt like it kind of tied those two um, fences together and made it kind of a cohesive piece. Um, so I created a piece of scenery out of it and then just copied pasted it all the way around making sure I um, was laying it correctly and um, yeah I think it turned out really good. I might go back and lower it some. I realize here it's kind of higher than, um, than, the, than it needs to be. So I might go back and fiddle with that some, simply because people trying to view the skunk will have a hard time doing so, because it is a like a four foot tall fence, and I have to keep in mind that there's going to be kids that are not able to see that height. Um, and also the thought of maybe putting in a glass wall or a, a basically a window to look through. 
Um, I'm not sold on that yet. I'm still tossing that idea around in my head. So that's the cool thing about these habitats. You can always go back and amend or change something if you decide it's not quite what you were going for. Uh, putting a capping fence on this part of it and I think it really ended up looking good as far as a habitat wall goes and uh, yeah then you just gotta make it a null barrier and then ensure that the barrier is pulled to each of the separate parts to make sure it's completely as far on the outside as it can go that's really as far as, as complicated as creating your own walls is. Um, I think you guys have seen me do this enough times that it's not a huge shock anymore, but if you're just starting to tune in, it's your first time coming in, I mean, I do welcome you to please look at my other videos. You can see them kind of in the clink, uh, click link above. Um, but I also don't mind helping or kind of mentioning little things that I'm doing as I go along. Um, so yeah, just trying to figure out what I wanted this habitat to look like. And the null barrier cannot really go past stairs for the most part. So I had to kind of play with this little habit of this, um, this edge of the habitat a little bit to make it work correctly. I'll be honest though, I think the Twilight Pack is like my favorite pack in a while. Um, I really enjoyed the Wetlands pack a lot. I thought it brought a lot to the game, but this pack is just, it's fun to, to do everything with. Like it's, it's fun to think about how I'm going to put the creatures in. It's fun to play with the little castle pieces and the, um, all the twisty bits and to kind of make a fun, spooky walkthrough for the family to enjoy. Um, I almost forgot about the lookout, um, bits there. So I added those in, um, of course, then we gotta go find our skunks, which we need to put into our habitat. Uh, I was immediately drawn to the ones that were really expensive, but of course, <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a ton of cash on these. Um, so I ended up getting the cheaper ones with decent numbers, because they'll they'll mate and they'll breed and then they'll eventually make really good babies. So it's okay. Um, so yeah, so I ended up getting I think one for like 200, one for like 300. Oh, sorry, one for 100, which I think it was like. A total of 400 um, conservation credits, which to me is very reasonable. Um, I, I tend to avoid the ones that are like 6,000 or 10,000 or crazy numbers like that. Um, I also made sure to add them to my work zone. That is something that you have to be very careful when you're creating new places in your zoo, that if you have work zones, that you don't forget to add them to the work zone. Um, if you're not using work zones in your zoo, I highly recommend it. Really look into it um, because when you break down your zoo into work zones, it makes it easier for your employees to be able to get around. It also makes them happier because they don't have to go as far distances. So um, I would say every, every work zone should have no more than like four habitats in it and then four is probably the most i would ever put in a work zone um and i also try to usually put at least a staff and a keeper hut within um within walking distance like really close to those habitats if you can put them like right in the center of those habitats that would be even better but sometimes it's not quite in the cards as far as the aesthetic i'm going for so i did sneak a keeper hut and a staff hut um, behind where the raccoons are, close to where the entrance to that is, um, simply because it just it's kind of a central location for everything. It's also tucked away from all the um, guests, so they'll never see it, but it's also within walking distance, so it's not super far for them to go, because all they have to do is kind of come around that bend from the raccoon area, and then they can access all of these habitats. Um, or they can also go the back way and go up the ramp for the red foxes. Um, I might possibly put one more habitat in this work zone, which I know will bring us to four. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about that because I try to put like two keepers, uh, one vet, and at least one to two caretakers per, per um, work zone. 
Um, but I might add one more small habitat, maybe. I'm not, I'm not positive on that yet. I'm still kind of tossing the idea back and forth. I've also been thinking about maybe doing a restaurant out there um, by the windmill area, because that area is blank still, but we still have wombats to put in. I think that's the last creature we have to put in as well. Um, I'm trying to go off of memory of which animals we still have to put in, and I'm pretty sure the wombat is the last one. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> My brain does not recall. Um, yeah, raccoon, red fox, common wombat, striped skunk, and fruit bat. We've got all but the wombat. So maybe we'll put like a little habitat attached to like a restaurant, or maybe we'll just skip the restaurant idea altogether. But I do kind of like the idea of having a restaurant kind of in every zone. Um, I feel like it kind of rounds out the, the zone, so to speak. Um, while I was putting these lights in, I noticed that there was trash on the floor, which to me meant there wasn't enough trash cans. Um, I also found that these flame lights, I think were just too bright for the vibe we were going for, which was more of a, um, more of a green slash orangey light, kind of dark, um, night walk versus the bright lights that those fire lights gave us. So I ended up deleting, I think all of them, or at least most of them, because they're just a little much in, um, these twilight pack areas. Um, especially with as bright as these cauldrons are, they really light up the place really well. Um, so I feel like the flame lights are not as needed. Um, so you'll see me kind of replace and make sure we have enough cauldrons everywhere. I did put the flame lights on the outdoors there simply because I haven't put anything there, but right there is where I'm thinking we're going to put maybe a restaurant slash wombat habitat. Um, and then make that our final habitat in this area. So I might break my rules just a bit and add one more habitat, which means I'll probably just get one more keeper and one more caretaker for the area, um, which is fine. I mean, as long as you're careful with your placement of your employees, uh, having a bigger work zone is not a bad idea. You just gotta be careful with it because you don't want your animals to be um, ignored because they don't have enough keepers. Speaking of, um, during all of this, there was a slight breakdown because I forgot to do my work zone um, for the flamingos and the flamingos never had a caretaker. So we did have uh, some devastation in the flamingo area. <laughs> I hate to announce that, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. We did have to basically redo our flamingo area as far as uh, inhabitants go because unfortunately I didn't notice and we were so busy building that uh, I wasn't in time to rescue the poor babies. I was able to rescue about four of them so um, none of the it was I think there were all babies that were left unfortunately but and I think maybe one adult but you know that's just part of the game. Part of the game is uh, learning not to forget the small details. So it's why I'm kind of reinforcing the make sure you check your work zones when you're finishing a new habitat because if you don't, it can be detrimental. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I want to make sure this habitat is well-rounded. I'm getting um, all of the foliage needing add, added to this location. I also realized those trees are not in their um, preferred I guess, um, foliage settings. So I just kind of moved them out to stay in the area, to kind of stay in the wrapped up area of this area of this habitat and this backspace. But I gave them trees that fit their um, preference style for biome and, and continent. Um, the skunks, I, they didn't seem to require a lot of foliage, so I didn't go overboard. I also realized I didn't put them in a natural water area in, so I did that here. I gave them a good little drinking area. I didn't make it super deep because skunks really aren't big swimmers, but it gives them a little area to eat, um, uh, drink without having to uh, use that spigot. I also was trying to give them a little bit of, I guess, spaces or areas where they could go to hide or tuck themselves behind if they were to happen to have a shy moment or get 
um, upset by people viewing them, especially if I end up deciding to lower this some or add some glass in. Um, they could possibly get a little shy from it. So I'm just trying to make sure they have little areas to tuck behind and feel confidence. Um, also to break up the space a little bit. We did put some cat nine tails around the water, which I really like. Because a lot of the spaces around here have the, the long grass, but not necessarily the cattails. So I thought it was fitting. And this is just me perfecting the little areas, making sure everything's the way it's supposed to be, smoothing out anything that wasn't necessary. And then of course we had to add them a little burrow. So if you aren't aware of the burrows yet, they're really, really cute additions um, that some of the animals can use. You can also add an education board in for them. It's the same ones we used for the picture over there, um, the little information board. But these are a little bit different. You can change the settings on it now to actually give you um, a view down into the burrow. So you've just got to go down and select a uh, camera and then select the correct one. I knew it was the most recent one. Um, I do need to go back through and name these so I am sure to get them correct, um, the burrows anyway. And I did something off camera where you guys aren't going to get to see it, but I actually went back over to the platypuses and made sure I add education for their burrows as well as education for some of their viewing areas to make sure everything was 100% um, up to snuff because apparently I missed a couple education areas for them. So I was just making sure it was fully set. Um, I also didn't realize I had to press play here to get that to, to work correctly because I don't know why it wasn't working and I was like going a little crazy. So I press play and there you go. That's so the people can stop and look inside their burrow and they can see them sleeping. It's really, really cute when, when they use it. Um, and then uh, just kind of going back over the areas where everybody walks, I noticed that I had a lot of... Um, leaving areas that hadn't been filled in. And I want this whole place to tie together really well. I want it to be very cohesive. Um, I don't want just pathing, just sitting there naked by itself. So I made sure to fill all that in and get it really spaced out well so that it would feel just like everything ties together. Um, I didn't do this right away because I wanted to be sure I didn't want to put any other habitats or exhibits or anything over here. Um, after thinking about it, I decided I kind of didn't want to put anything else over here because I figured there was enough exhibits and a cute little habitat that was plenty. I was trying to decide how to fill this specific space and I realized I wanted to put a snack area over here. Um, I didn't like how he was sitting at first so I kind of adjusted that and moved it to straighten it out some. And, um, and I also wanted to decorate it to make it match and look like this area that it was going to be in. Um, I just wanted to make sure there was some sort of snack area where people could come and bring their kids and come over and get something real quick on their way over to like or maybe a dessert after the restaurant or maybe something to grab while they're looking at the exhibits to stalve off the kids before heading over to a restaurant or something. Um, we all know how that goes. So this is me decorating the area making it look very cohesive and tied in with the rest of the build and I wanted it to look have that castle look so I decided to go with some of the wood and some of the cobble from it and give it those little torches because I also realized that this specific area wasn't super lit up um, the centerpiece is lit up but that was about it so um, I used all the things we had used over in the exhibit area as well as in the skunk area to kind of tie it all together and of course, the last thing I decided we needed was some sort of a sign, just something to kind of be a little bit bigger than the food itself. So that if kids saw it from a little bit of a distance, they'd be like, Mom, Mom, I want a cupcake. Um, anyway, so I thought this was really cute and really, really cool. And then I also kind of thought further advertising wouldn't hurt, like a couple signs out in the outer area. I cleaned up some of the um, things I'd left behind, made sure I finished laying all the leaves around the um, outskirts that I'd already finished. And I mean, this is really just polishing up everything we've done so far, trying to make sure that we have everything we're, we're supposed to have. I realized that it was kind of a big blank area there. So I filled that in. I might end up putting another f like drink stand right there. I haven't decided yet. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think I should put another drink area right through here, through this little um, 
courtyard area, um, maybe kind of close to where I'm putting the leaves right now, uh, kind of on the other side, close to the cupcakes, but not right in front of the cupcakes. I don't know. It's kind of a all a work in progress, all in thought. So this is what we finished today. I really hope you guys like it. I had a complete blast making this cute little habitat, quaint and adorable. So I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, ring that bell. Um, all those really cool YouTube things. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.